Thank you for joining me for another episode of The Wandering Watercolor. Let's paint. So this is the 10th and final page of the Chattanooga Scenery Watercolor Coloring Book. Uh, it's my most recent book and I make all of these by hand using lithographs. And this is a image that uh, the place is basically downtown Chattanooga where Coolidge Park is. There's this really cool little fountain area. Kids often play in here. Um, it's a very nice scenery. I highly recommend if people are visiting to go out there and it's a it's a really good place. There's a lot of different areas where you can stop and paint just because there's so much information and such a variety of scenery. And this is what we'll be aiming to get the finished painting to look like. As always, you want to have a scrap piece of paper to test out colors and marks and a place to mix your colors. So this is just a little porcelain dish. Um, two cups or jars of water on the side, um, a rag or a paper towel, whatever works, um, just so that you have something to use to dry off your brush and, and the painting as well when needed. And then we're going to start off by wetting our paints. It always makes them easier to work with when they're wet and oh, a little bit got mixed up here so I'm just going to take that out. And uh, you can also just use your brush. You don't have to. Um, you don't have to use a spray bottle. Like the, one of these is just like a dollar at Walmart, or uh, just yeah. I, I think they also sell them sometimes at like small pharmacy stores. But <clears throat> excuse me, my allergies are acting up a bit. So if I sniffle a little bit, I do apologize. So the first color that we're going to mix is going to. Be, there's a lot of green in this piece, and it's more the the green tends to lean a little more towards the yellow side so here's the or yeah yellow green so what we're gonna do is first we're gonna mix the the ground color or the grass color I should say we're gonna grab a lot of yellow and mix all that up we need more yellow probably get some more water this is a bit too pigmented we want it to be a little more uh, a little more transparent so yeah like that that's perfect and we're just gonna do the flat wash right behind here um, there's a lot going on so it may be a little difficult to kind of pick out the, the location so if you want to just watch where I put the color in as always, you don't have to paint these exactly as I paint them. You can always do your own thing. Don't feel like you have to, like you can always just do what you feel like. You can even do just a completely abstract rendering. It doesn't even have to, you could do like purple and orange and all kinds of different colors. This is just kind of a baseline starting point for anyone that just wants to practice, follow along for more realistic rendering. Uh, although my, my rendering tends to be a bit cartoony, uh, which, which is just kind of like what I like in terms of style. So I'm just doing the flat wash, which is basically, it's almost like you're filling it in with a marker. You're just going in, being careful of those details, and just filling all that in just a little bit at a time. Like that. And then on this little patch over here, in between the two sculptures. And here. And then there. And then back here, just going in very, very slowly. There is a lot of detail in this painting. And I got a little bit out of the line here, but it's not too big of a deal. 
don't stress out if you end up going out at the lines a little bit. It's totally fine. Okay, in here. Like that. And then finishing off back here. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna rinse off my brush. And so I'm just gonna pull up my reference. So we can actually use that same grass color to fill in some of the trees. Not all of them, but some of them, like this tree, this tree, this tree, and up here, I think. Yes, all of that, we can fill that in with, uh, it's actually both of these trees right here. So what we'll do is, kind of like the previous page, how we were mixing the colors and the yellow highlights towards the tips of the trees, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna go ahead and lay in this color right here. And we're doing it a little thicker now, like we're just kind of really laying it in. So because it's a little thicker, less water, um, because as the water stays out, it does slowly evaporate. Okay, so we're just gonna do that. I'm gonna grab some water. I'm gonna grab some of the yellow directly from the pan. Gotta clean this yellow. Got a little bit of orange in there. I'll just grab directly from the pan and just start putting that out and mixing it in towards the edges. Mix in the edges and then spread that out towards the tips of the leaves. Just like that. There we go. Okay, so that's good. Now rinse off our brush. And then the same thing, we're gonna grab the green here. We'll go ahead and fill in, just lay it in heavy for this tree right here. Just kinda go in really heavy. Okay, we're gonna rinse off our brush, grab some yellow, and then same thing with the edges. Like that. Okay. Do the same thing for the tree back here. We'll put in a lot. We, we are also going to do another layer of green, um, just darkening it up a little bit uh, for, the, for all of the trees, just more towards the base to add a little more uh, variation. But for now, we're just kind of blocking in colors, adding some gradients. And, and then gradient, uh, in, in case you're not, you know, uh, familiar with all the art lingo. All it is is just the way that the color transitions from one color to another. That's it. That's all that it is. And watercolor is particularly good at providing really nice smooth gradients which can look really appealing. Especially when layered in with other textures and colors over top. You, you, can, you can add a lot of complexity fairly quickly but then it also looks appealing and kind of like it's pleasing because it's not too harsh. Like I, sometimes I feel like with oil painting, uh, well, I guess again, depending on the technique, but maybe more so acrylic and ink, when you layer colors, you can't get those soft, subtle edges like you can with watercolor. Well, and oil painting is just, it's, it's a whole nother thing, but you can get some nice soft edges there. It's just, I just like how delicate watercolor looks. I guess that's, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm gonna grab some of this here, and then same thing. I'm just gonna lay that in more towards the center and the base from where the branches are coming out, and then rinse my brush, grab some yellow, and just 
cover that in on the edges and blend in some of some of the green in there it doesn't have to be all super yellow it's nice to have that variety okay there we go rinse my brush and then a little bit so here this tree is gonna be much darker so we're just gonna kind of go in here and then fill in this like that and then a little bit on the top a little bit of yellow We will add, I know a lot of it looks very similar right now, but when we add all the variation in colors and shadows, it will, you'll end up seeing the depth and the light and the darks. It, it's just a process, it just takes time. So I'm rinsing my brush now, and the next thing that we'll focus on is the color, let me bring up my reference. The color that makes up all of the sculptures here and most of the foreground it's basically a um, it's kind of like a light brown leaning more on the yellow side and what we'll do is we'll cover everything like all of these along with the only things that we'll leave white are these two circles here the, the purple sections, we'll cover those with the base color and then we'll go over them with purple whenever it's time to do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's start mixing that color. We're gonna get some brown. And that's really a lot of brown. I'm gonna dilute that with water. I'm noticing that from most of these sceneries, brown green and yellow seem to be the colors that i really go heavy on okay okay so do that and get some yellow that's pretty close to the color um almost sorry there's a little bit of a glare on my paper It's almost what we want, but we do want to mix up more of it because of how much we're covering. I'm going to put a bunch of water in here and I'm going to grab some more brown. And then more yellow. And some more yellow. Uh -oh. The green started mixing in, so I'm just gonna grab a paper towel, stop that from mixing in there. Okay, keep mixing this. A little more water, more yellow, and actually, also just just a slight hint of orange and we're gonna need a, a lot more water because we want to thin this out we don't want it to be too strong of a color especially for the base wash the base flat wash that we're building on top of so let's see so that's almost exactly what we need so yeah I'm gonna go with that so basically I'm just filling in everything I'm filling in the whole thing not really concerned about the details right now I'm just filling in the sculptures here going a little slower towards the edge so that I don't mess up the background in any way and if I do even a little bit that's all right okay just getting all those details in like that 
See, I got a little bit out of the line, but that's that's fine. It still looks fine. Just filling in all those details in here. I'm going a little faster because it helps keep everything looking more uniform. If you pause for too long of a period, then when you go back in, the edges will be showing up. That's one of the tricks with watercolor. And also depending on the paint itself along with the along with the uh, the paper that you're using. There's some really nice French paints that actually take a lot longer to dry, but they're completely overpriced. So I don't use them. So I make my own paint. <laughs> so we go here. Go here. Okay, so all of this. The only thing that we will be careful to leave to be white is going to be these circles that I'm com that are coming up right here. After I finish this turtle, I'll show you more specifically. So. This circle right here towards the center of the fountain area. I'm just gonna be kind of careful, go around it. There we go. And then there's an inner circle. That's this one right here. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush. <clears throat> so that looks actually pretty good. So we have the base color in there. Looks good. Maybe a little more orange than the original, that's fine. It's really hard to mix watercolors exactly as you did in the past. Usually every time I mix a color, even though it's similar, it's just a shade off which it can add to, to the to the appeal of watercolors it adds a lot so the next thing that we will do is mix in the darker greens in the background so the tree here 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 over here the little bushes in the background those are all a different shade of green <coughs> Excuse me. So, we can just use this uh, area right here that we mixed the previous green. I'm just going to grab this right here. Just a regular green with a little bit of brown. And that, man, that comes out so strong. <coughs> Again, I do apologize for clearing my throat. <laughs> and get more green. Okay, let's see. That looks good. It's just, it looks a little, uh, a little too dark. Actually, that, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. Because we want that the distinguish color because it, it really helps um, separate well I'm just, I'm just gonna add a little more water here and then let's see how that looks okay so I'm just gonna go in carefully in this right here in the back on the background color back here Carefully, just a flat wash. We're not worried about texture or patterns. But what we'll do now is with this color, 
and we're just going to work it up into the tree. That way it separates the trees in, that are in front of this one a little bit. I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to dry it off. And then just kind of pull this color up. Like that. And maybe do a little bit of dabbing just to show some texture. But that's all. That's all right there. That's perfect. Yeah, I just realized how much more yellow I made these trees. Um, but that's okay, because we are going to add more color to them. So this is fine. So I'm going to grab this. And then, again, go back in here in the back. I'm just going to color this in. Just slowly filling that color in. I'm actually going to... I'm just going to grab a bunch, take a bunch of that off of my brush so that I can pick up some of this color because there's too much over there. And then a little bit in here. Just very slowly, no need to rush. Okay, and then we're going to do the same on this side. Don't fill in the whole tree yet because towards the top we will, we will add another highlight of yellow so we have this like this I rinse my brush completely dry it off a bit and then grab some of that yellow and just lay it on the top here ah. it's too much I'm gonna take some off of my brush and then just kind of spread it around there we go and then blend that in with the green That looks good. Okay. Rinse my brush. Get a little bit of moisture off of it. And grab some more of the dark green. And then we're going to do the same for this tree right here. Basically, we're just laying in the color. Okay. that okay so that's good leaving kind of like the the tips um, blank just so we can add in that yellow just like we did a second ago with the other tree okay just go in and it's okay if you if the color starts mixing that's fine we don't need it to be as bright of a yellow as we did in the tree in the foreground. So like that, rinse my brush, get more yellow. Towards the tips, and then just kind of fill that in and let it bleed in. Careful not to get into the elephant sculpture that's right in front of this. So this looks good. That looks perfectly fine. I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to let that dry. So while that's drying, now we can lay in some foundation for the bridge. I'm going to grab a new spot on my plate. And the bridge is mostly composed of dark blue. And the first thing we'll do is we're going to grab this, just mix up a little bit on the side here. And we're going to add water. Okay. All right here. Okay. So this is perfect. So the bottom of the bridge is gray or the, under, the underneath, I should say, the belly of the bridge if that's even a thing. So I'm just adding this, just a straight line, like that. Trying not to bleed into the tree itself, and then just all of that. And 
and the same with just outlining just, just follow the lines here I kind of did them a little bit uh they're a, li they're a little abstract it's more just like a suggestion as opposed to an exact form to fill in so you could just kind of play around with that see like it's not perfect I'm just kind of putting it in where I think it should go it does not have to be perfect and that actually adds to the sense of space in the piece because if you add a lot of detail to the objects that are further back it's um, it doesn't look right because usually you lose detail the further back things are so just kind of outlining it loosely and then sh having that color in helps the viewer is recognize that that's an object that's further back you kind of get the idea of what it is but it doesn't have to be detailed and rinse my brush okay so we're just gonna let that dry and while that's drying we're gonna go back to this color that we used for the sculptures and in the fountain area What we want here is we actually want to just darken it up a little bit. There's going to be three layers of shading in this, the fountain area. The first layer, we just want to... Or, or the, well, we already have the first layer down. So the second layer that we're going to put on top of that, we're just going to add a little bit of brown because that does that darkens it up but not too much just enough to show that there's shadow and also we're going to put some water in here just to make it easier to work with as i mentioned earlier the longer the paint stays out the longer the, the more it dries so when you go back to use it again you do want to add water so that it's easier to work with Okay, so the shadows, the way that we're going to block them in, you're kind of imagining that the light is coming in from the top, but more like from the back, like just off screen, like just kind of like back here. And so it's kind of shining down and towards us. So a lot of the, a lot of the forms, the, the, the planes that are closer to us, we're going to cover that a lot with shadow. So here we go. First in the turtle. Actually, I'm going to go, I'm left-handed, so I'm going to go from right to left as opposed to left to right. Um, you may want to do the reverse depending on which hand is your dominant one. So, for example, with the elephant, I'm going to just fill this in like that. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I am going to leave that edge um, unpainted. And then just kind of like th the, the sections of the sculpture that are closer to the outside. I'm just leaving kind of like a highlighted white edge to them. Okay. And then this entire section right here we're just gonna because this is all just one basically a wall so it's not really getting any of that light and then a lot of this like this so that's perfect so that's good on that one with the horse the horse is a little bit of an angle so we're gonna fill in this right here like this this a little bit of the cheek here and the neck and then just leaving kind of like the closer to the edge of the sculpture it is you just want to leave that without the shadow because it'll help showing that there's highlights and again the base here and then we're going to use the same um, color I almost forgot for the shadow that the, the elephant sculpture is casting down we're basically going to go like this we're just going to cover the the ground and then we're going to just do a little bit of an angle like this and that's it right here and then for the lion the lion's a little weird because it's also kind of at an angle 
So basically what we want to do is we're going to cover this here like that, like that, a little bit here, just showing some folding in that saddle that the sculptor put on there. And then like this, and then definitely the back of the head going forward and just kind of like wrapping that around. Maybe a little bit to show detail in the face there. And just the rock that's right there. And that's good. That's good the way that it is. And then the turtle. Um, well, I just realized actually for the for the horse, I'm just going to go over this again just because it looks a little light to me, th this little wall. Same with this one. I'm just going to repeat. Probably added too much water when I mixed this color, so that's that's okay though. So this is good, and then actually the the shadow that the horse is casting down onto the ground, I'm just gonna kind of make it like this, just a little bit like this. That way the viewer has which has an idea which way the sun is coming from. And it's also, it's high up, so the, the shadow itself doesn't stretch too far back. It's more, it's closer to the object. And then the turtle, we're going to add a little bit shadow under in the mouth, underneath the mouth, kind of like going forward, covering the front half of the body, a little bit underneath, maybe an outline here for the shell, just a little bit, face. It, it doesn't have to be perfect. You kind of want to give that idea, but when the detail is far away you, you can't really do as much but this is plenty like that and then obviously the shadow that's going to be coming out not too far it's going to be coming out like this a little bit and that's pretty much it okay Rinse my brush. This all looks great so far. While that's drying, I'm gonna focus on the the bushes back here, along with the tree in the back. It's basically just regular green. We're not really gonna mix it in with anything else. Just a regular green. But we're not using a lot of water. We do want it to be more pigmented. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just cover that in. Maybe I use a little bit of water. It's kind of strong. Okay, I'm just going to cover that in, in the back, just going in like this, carefully, I already messed up twice just now, and just kind of lay that in, just carefully, and then just all of this. So there's, that way there's a wide variety of actual green because there is if you go to the park you'll so you'll see that there is a ton of green there all different shades different saturations so okay I'm gonna rinse my brush and one thing that I did forget is this path this, there's a path that goes all the way across. I'm going to use the same color that I used for the sculptures, but I'm just going to use a good amount of water to kind of dilute it a little bit so that it's we don't want to stand we don't want it to stand out too much, but we don't want it to be present. So basically, I'm just going to do a little bit here and just kind of do a line that follows Like that. Yeah, I think that's fine. i rinse my brush. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this color. And we need to mix um, kind of a gray, a dark blue gray for the really far background. Well, actually, first, let's because we don't want to go into an area that 
this green that we just laid down is drying. So we're gonna do the underneath of the bridge. And that's basically just kind of like a brown, uh, it's gray, like a brownish gray. Really try to just kind of like desaturated. Got a little more blue in there. Okay, honestly, this is probably fine. This looks fine. I'm just going to use this and go in carefully. I'll fill that in. And just carefully, just filling in, it's, it's just a flat wash, nothing special. We're just blocking in that color. And then when you get to this corner over here, there are some posts that are kind of going up into the bridge, uh, or support beams. You just kind of like, you just do a little outline on them too. And that's it. Okay, so that's good there. There is my brush. Okay, that's looking good so far. Let me pull up my reference. Yeah, the reference looks a little darker. So I actually like it when things look lighter and more vibrant. So, but there are still several layers into the painting that we have to go. Um, so while that's drying, we can actually go ahead and switch back and work a little bit on mixing our darker shadows for the fountain. I know I keep referring it as a, to as a fountain, but those of you that haven't been to this place, this is there's water that comes up out of the ground, and also water comes out of the like the trunk and the mouths of the animals. It's actually really cool. It's really cool to see. Okay. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of brown again, just to darken this up now, and. Because there's so much, there is a lot of yellow in this color, so in order to kind of darken it up even more, I'm going to grab a little bit of purple and mix it up. Okay. Let's see, so this is a much darker shadow tone. So with this tone, I'm going to, I'm going to add more water, so it's, <coughs> excuse me. I'm just adding a bunch more water to make it more transparent and also easier to work with. Okay, so let's see. So this looks good. And we can also layer these shadows many times over. That's why it's better to thin out the color and then layer it in, as opposed to going too dark and then having difficulty taking it out. And so the way that we're going to do this is we're, we're not going to put in anywhere near as much shadow as we did for the initial layer. We're just going to aim at the areas that are darker. So like, for example, behind the ear here for the elephant, going down like this. This is good. Maybe a little bit down here. The saddle is definitely darker and then a little bit underneath. You can also use this to help emphasize certain details. And then maybe the ear, just a little bit in the indent. And then definitely here for the eye. And going into the trunk a little bit. And down here, a couple of the sides of the rocks here, just like that. A little bit down here. And then definitely this area this this whole the side of the base you're gonna do a thick shadow there because it really helps kind of separate it out that that looks good 
and when it dries we'll be able to see more of the details that we just covered but that looks good so far so we can do the same thing for the horse just kind of cover that in the base see how that see how much dimension that adds it, it just immediately makes it feel more three-dimensional a little bit more in the belly of the horse here maybe some of that leg a little bit in the rocks here not nothing too much maybe a little bit in the part that's open in the mouth of the horse the eyeball there just a little bit of an outline for the chin there we go okay well that looks good and then the saddle of the lion here I'm just gonna outline it a little bit back here in the tail underneath the leg underneath the saddle maybe a couple of lines here for the saddle just to show that there are I know that these creases were sculpted but they're still there the back of the arm towards the belly here like that and a little bit underneath where the, the hair meets the the back and then like that just a couple of strokes here and there and then down here okay and okay so this is good for the lion and then the turtle we're just gonna go like this just fill in that dark shadow for the base the base shadow on the side the other sides we can't see but we do want this one to be in shadow okay and then just a little bit maybe inside the mouth there of the turtle make that distinction a little bit underneath kind of like the areas that would be darker because the light can't get to them I rinse my brush that looks pretty good I'm gonna switch back to this one and I'm gonna mix the color I'm just gonna use this gray and I'm going to mix the color for the I'm gonna use dark blue for the far far background the really far like we can't really tell what it is actually we're just we're just doing like a little bit of a wash here just to block in that color just like that in like that and we have that color blocked in and it's pretty much it for that I'm gonna rinse off my brush while that's drying, we can actually go back up into the bridge. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab more of the dark blue and then just kind of mix up a little bit of the dark blue, not, not too much water, just more pigment really. And you just wanna go back over this, this part of the bridge. And we're just gonna fill that in like that. all the way and then because this is the side that's away from the sun so it's darker so we're gonna outline some of the and it doesn't have to be perfect again just going going in and just being kind of a little bit imperfect on on purpose like that I'm just gonna outline this one. Like that. Like that. And that's good on that. Okay, perfect. Okay, so next I'm gonna grab a whole new area to mix my colors.
and what I'm trying to mix now is a little bit of the darker green that will be going as a texture for the trees. So I'm just going to grab some of this green, some of the yellow. This is kind of closer to the color that we have right here, but it's not, it's a little darker. And I'm going to grab a little bit of brown, not too much, just the tiniest amount. Okay, looks good. Some water. Okay, there we go. And basically, I'm just going to pull up my reference. Like, you see that there's some shading at the bottom here, and then also a little bit in the... Oh, actually, I forgot to do that. I forgot to do that here in the reference. Um, so we're just going to do a little bit, not too much, just kind of put in some at the bottom here like that and just kind of jag it like we're not it's not trying to be perfect but just kind of do this and then let it um, just do some dots maybe some really small strokes just to show that there is texture and then same right here just a little bit doesn't need to be a lot Okay, like that. And the same back here, just a little bit, just some dabs. Okay, there's leaves there. We can tell there's texture. Okay, and then and then here. Like that. Just maybe some outlines. Less so when it gets into the the yellow parts, just because there's more sunshine there, so or more light, I should say. So okay, so that looks good. I'm gonna rinse off my brush, and then the next thing we just want to grab some brown. This is basically just straight brown. It doesn't have to be too much. And I'm going to use that to fill in some of the tree branches. Like that. Very careful around the face of the line here because it's a dark brown, so it'll help the face itself pop out. Make it look better. And then a little bit back here. I'm going to rinse that. And now we need to mix in the colors for the, the large uh, walls that are basically holding up the bridge. And that's going to be a light, very light, blue-gray. And I need more blue. Okay, so kind of like that. That's too blue. And a little more brown. Thing that's that, that looks good so I'm just gonna lay that in and we're not as concerned about details for the far back objects as mentioned earlier so we're just gonna do that okay that looks good Rinse my brush. Next, what we do need to mix is the color for these light posts here. And that's going to be... Actually, we could just use this green. The green and the dark blue. And... It's supposed to be like a very dark teal color. Let's see. So that's pretty dark. Let's see.
Like that. Okay. Okay. That looks good. I rinse off my brush. And grab a little bit of purple. A little bit of brown. You know, mix them together. And that's actually just about the exact same color that we need. I add more water though. I want it to be a little more transparent. And let's see. Yeah, so sorry if you can't really uh, grab another piece of paper just to show you my uh, my glare from my from my light. So like, let's see. So this is the color that we're going for. Okay, so we're gonna go in. This right here, this little square or shape that's going down like this. Just wanna fill that in slowly, just following the contours. And then like this, and then going in like this, just towards the center. Basically, there's like different shapes that are kind of aiming in towards the center. And there's this one. And the one coming from down here. I kind of painted that shape in, but I just think it looks nice. So there's uniformity there. Okay. Okay, that looks great. So really only two more things left to do. One is the sky and then also some outlines for the very front. I'm just gonna step back a moment. I noticed that I actually ended up putting much darker um, texture in the tree here, but that's okay. So for the sky, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add, we're gonna grab some of the light blue, and this is basically all that we need. Get some water, and then just kind of covering in the top, kind of like that, and then I rinse off my brush or get mostly water on there and then just kind of bring it down like that adding some texture and we can leave the we can leave the actual bridge kind of like outlined almost with the white can go in here in the back a little bit if we want to. Actually, I like that. I'm just going to leave that like that. Looks good. And so basically, the last part, uh, my brush is, um, there's no color on the brush. There's a little bit of water. I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this black, and I'm just going to use it just like ink. So for example, I'm just going to go like, the, if, if you hold your brush straight up and down, you can make really nice thin lines. But I go more at an angle because I don't want to be blocking the camera. So just go a little bit like this. And 
You can also just do a couple of test marks before putting them down directly onto the paper just so that you're more confident with them. And I'm actually going to move this so I have more space. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to outline kind of like around the head of the lion just because I want to separate it more from the background. The outline itself is not going to be very thick, but it is noticeable. There we go, just like that. Okay, and then some short lines for the mane. Like that. A couple of lines here and there, just to show that there's texture. Grab a little more. And a little bit like outlining the saddle here, just ever so slightly. That in the back. And a little bit around here, like that. The main, okay. And then the turtle over here, just a little bit, just kind of like slowly. If you mess up a little bit, kind of like I just did, it's okay. And just some of the details. Base, make it stand out more. Same with the horse here, just a little bit. Like that. Okay. Maybe show some of those blocks that are on the base. And lastly, I'm just going to do a little black dot here for the eye of the elephant. Outline a little bit of the trunk so you can see it a little clearer. And the ear back here. Some lines like that showing the bricks. In the line itself, you want to do it a little thicker in some places, a little thinner in some places. You, you want that variability. And then a little bit back here. Let's see, I'm just going to step back again. Yeah, that looks great. I am very happy with how that turned out. I think, uh, let's see, I'm gonna pull up the reference here. Yeah, actually, I think this turned out better. I think we did a really good job with this book. Um, I think most, if not all, the paintings ended up being better than the reference. Okay. Okay, so that was it. Where We are at one hour of painting, so thank you for painting with me and sticking through it. Remember, you can always just render it however you want. You don't have to do it exactly as I did. And you don't even have to do it all in one go. You can just pause at any point and go back to it whenever you're ready, and it'll be just fine. Uh, if you have questions, always just leave them in the comments or just send me a message. And I do appreciate you, and I'll see you on the next video.